Hey guys, I just finished testing the latest version of DOSBox staging, which is one of the many flavors of DOSBox. And I think you will find this video really interesting. Hopefully it will answer the question, is the latest version of DOSBox better than the real thing? In this video, we will talk about the graphics first. How do the games look like on the screen? And we start this video by talking about the good old CRT monitor, which is the gold standard for retro DOS PC gaming. Now this CRT monitor is nothing special. It's actually one of the more modern ones. It has digital controls and a pretty modern on-screen display. And you can see me adjusting the image here. When we look a little bit closer how DOS games look like on the CRT monitor, we can see a few interesting aspects. The first one is that pixels are not square. They're slightly taller than they are wider. Modern displays, however, use square pixels and try squeezing something rectangular into a square hole. Well, that's the real issue here. So this is what DOSBox looks like at 1080p with the output set to OpenGL NB, which stands for non-bilinear. And we can see some pixels end up larger than others, which doesn't look very good. We can switch the output to OpenGL, which uses a bilinear filtering at the cost of a soft and blurry image. And we can still sort of see that the pixels are of different sizes. DOSBox staging has a pixel perfect scaler integrated and the way it works is it scales the image sacrificing aspect ratio but keeping the pixels the same size. So it's a bit of a compromise and it works really well at 1080p. We're now getting a nice image. All the pixels are the same size and the difference in aspect ratio is actually not that noticeable. Do note we're losing a bit of uh, vertical space. So we have some black bars at the top and the bottom. Now that was at 1080p. Recently I upgraded all my equipment to 4K. So what is the deal with a 4K monitor? We have more pixels to work with. In theory, this shouldn't be an issue anymore. And yeah, I can confirm that. At 4K, we have a lot more pixels to play with. So we can use OpenGL non bilinear we get a sharp image and the pixels do appear to be the same size so that's at 4k things will only get better once monitors go to 8k now something is very important and i see this online in a lot of discussions about crt monitors and tvs and most of the discussion is focused on home computers and consoles but pc monitors were quite different they were really high-end devices and if we look closely, I will put some photos on the screen, you can see the image is really nice and sharp. However, despite them being so sharp, if we switch back and forth between DOSBox and a CRT monitor, even a modern one, we can definitely see that the DOSBox image looks a little bit too sharp. And for a very long time, I really liked this pixel look, but I've changed my mind. So some of you might be jumping off your seat and yelling at the screen, hang on a minute, my experience is different. I remember seeing scan lines on my computer and you are right. So I have some footage here. This is from another YouTube channel, RetroSpector78. He did a really high quality video about a IBM EGA machine. And we can clearly see in these games on the screen that yes, there are scan lines. So what's going on here is we can see really two different generations of display technologies. And I don't want to get into too much detail. It's quite a rabbit hole, but the older monitors, the EGA monitors, I refer to them as the 15 kilohertz displays. They have fat scan lines. Whereas on the newer monitors, they use a technology called double scanning, which basically means the same scan line is drawn twice. So even on a modern monitor, if you look closely, you can still see scan lines, but they are just very thin in comparison to what you get on the EGA monitor. So a lot of that nostalgic feeling, it hardly depends on which machine did you grow up with. If you played a lot of EGA games on an original EGA machine, you will miss those fat, beautiful scan lines. But if like me, you had a 386 with VGA, 
all your games looked totally different, nice and sharp and clear. And the cool thing is with DOSBox, you can sort of replicate both looks by using shaders. And for a very long time, I never touched shaders. I preferred having big fat pixels, but I've now played around with some of these shaders and yeah, um, I can't go back. It's something I cannot unsee. And especially with the double scanned monitor look, uh, the image is sharp, but there's some sort of a detailed structure inside the pixels. And if we zoom in really close to a CRT monitor, we can see what's going on here. Uh, this is the shadow mask and some of these shaders try to replicate this and I've got a footage here with one of the DOSBox shaders and we're just going to toggle back and forth between the CRT monitor and what DOSBox looks like with such a shader and I think it's getting there. It's not close enough. There's still work to be done and one of the issues is resolution. 4K is not high enough just yet to replicate this fine structure. So I'm really looking forward to 8K monitors and then we should have an image that looks closer to what you get on C CRT monitor. And I tried playing with the sharp pixels and I just can't do it anymore. And these filters, they just add uh, something, some analog uh, feeling and it just gives me a bit of extra nostalgia and it's something I can't unsee anymore. So yeah, I've, turned, I've done a 180. <laughs> I like shaders now. In DOSBox to toggle between the double scanned look and the scan line look, there is a machine setting. And if you set it to VGA only, you will get the double scanned look. But if you want the fat scan lines, change machine to SVGA underscore S3, which is the default setting. There's another complication and that is a refresh rate. DOS games that run at 320 by 200 run at 70 Hertz. So that is a challenge. And this is something I cannot test at the moment. I don't have anything with variable refresh rate for testing. And ideally you want to have a setup that can do 4K and 120 Hertz with variable refresh rate. And that's quite expensive. You need a decent video card that can drive all that. But if you can afford it, you will get a really decent uh, experience. And DOSBox Staging mentions it on their main page. Support for variable refresh rate and their various settings in the configuration file. So I believe this should work just fine, but it's not something I have been able to test at this stage. So what is my opinion? Is DOSBox better than the real thing when it comes to graphics? If you own a CRT monitor, and that can be a little bit challenging these days with the age uh, and the prices in the retro, uh, on, on the retro market. But anyway, let's say you have a CRT PC monitor, then DOSBox is not better yet. It is still the gold standard. The games will look absolutely beautiful. You will get the 70 Hertz smooth scrolling and all the pixels will look the, the perfect size. Uh, you can adjust the image. So some games use slightly weird resolutions not an issue for the CRT monitor. It also handles uh, switching between uh, low resolution and high resolution really well. Now, you might have to have two machines if you want the scan line look with the fat scan lines on an EGA machine. You need a different setup, so you definitely need uh, two monitors for that. But regardless, the CRT monitor is still the gold standard. However, DOSBox has definitely gotten closer. If you have a 4K monitor, and you play around with some of these shaders, you can definitely get a decent image. If you happen to also have a 120 Hertz monitor with variable refresh rate, and you've got all the video card and all, all the equipment that can drive that comfortably, then the experience is pretty awesome. DOSBox also has the convenience by just changing the configuration file. You can adapt to if you wanna play with uh, double scanned or scan lines. So the convenience factor is definitely there. I can't wait for 8K monitors to become a mainstream and hopefully that will also trigger some new shader development for the DOSBox uh, community. If you have some shaders that you recommend, please share your opinion down below. Um, yeah, I've changed my mind. I used to despise shaders, but now with high resolution monitors, I really think this is the future and I can't wait for 8K 
to uh, bring DOSBox closer to the real thing. A few words on DOSBox staging. I really like their website, their mission statement. It's quite clear what they're trying to achieve. And they have a beautiful Discord server where you get yeah immediate answers. So that was really nice to see. And yeah, if I could give them some advice in terms of what to focus on, it would have to be usability. So configuring DOSBox, the configuration files, it's not straightforward, especially for uh, people new to DOS retro gaming. Now there's a front end from the old days, Defend Reloaded. Some sort of integrated front end like that would probably be fantastic and it would encourage more people to check out DOS because I think DOS games are fantastic. There's a big focus on consoles and home computers and it's really easy to just load a ROM file or, or insert an Amiga disk, but the DOS experience is a little bit harder. You need to know a little bit about the command line and uh, the machine configurations. So that is my wish uh, to have some sort of a graphical user interface to make it easier for beginners. In the next video, we will talk about sound. So I will go into my stash of sound cards and MIDI modules and we will look at how does DOSBox compare in terms of sound with the real thing. And now I want to hear from you. What is your opinion of DOSBox and what you've seen in this video? Maybe it's time to install it again and see what you think. And I'm really interested to hear from you about uh, the shaders, high resolution displays. If you have an 8K monitor, yeah, I would absolutely want to hear from you. And also if you have a GeForce or FreeSync setup, uh, tell us about the 70 Hertz experience. Do you get smooth motion with your computer. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. That way you get updates about the next video where we talk about the sound and other aspects of DOSBox and how it compares to a real retro gaming PC. Thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.